Welcome to State of Politics, I'm David Zhang. And uh, before we get started on today's video, make sure if you're watching on Ganjin World to follow our channel and on YouTube, make sure to subscribe and also comment below to discuss our topic today. Now, I'm very curious as to how many people died in China from the 40 so days uh, since we saw the outbreak in December. Well, you know, given the crematoriums, the videos, uh, the amount of body bags that we've seen in China, uh, it just seems like there needs to be a math problem to really calculate that number. Last episode, I said that the founder of Falun Gong, Master Li Hongzhi, revealed that uh, China's actual death toll from COVID in the three years from 2020 to now is uh, 400 million, and that uh, an additional 100 million people will die when this outbreak ends in this wave. Now, the, the reason I'm very curious is as to you know, what percentage of that 400 million, which I do believe is actually the number given the track record of the CCP lying, that is actually a crematorium death from just the 40 or so days, 44 days really, uh, if we consider it today, since the latest round of outbreak since December. So that's kind of our focus today. Now, question is, why am I so focused on, you know, exposing the CCP? Well, it's, it's pretty personal, actually, because, well, I came from China and I recognize how dangerous the fact that this communist regime would be to the world if we do not expose their lies. I mean, given the fact that the pandemic started in China back in 2020 and it's only caused the world to suffer for three years and it continues. But today I also read something on the Epoch Times and uh, it kind of shook my mind. And this also came from Master Lee, so I would like to read this for you. Uh, it says, the article is titled, uh, Falun Gong founder Li Hongzhi publishes how humankind came to be. And I recommend that you guys, I'll put the link in the description to, to read this article and see for yourself what exactly is uh, this article about. But basically there's a part in here, okay? So in the beginning he says, how humankind came to be. I would like to first pass along my greetings to everyone on the advent of the Chinese New Year. New Year's would normally be a time for sharing a few pleasant remarks about the occasion, but I am seeing imminent danger approaching humanity and have been called upon by higher beings to pass along. For this reason, several things to everyone in this world. Each of what I am about to disclose is a higher, closely guarded secret, and these are beings uh, being shared to provide a true picture of affairs and to give people another chance for uh, at redemption. Now in this article, there's a part that I, I thought was very important, especially when it comes to the Chinese Communist Party. Um, so it says here, quote, this is the fundamental reason why some people are wealthy and others are poor, why some hold positions of high rank while others are destitute and homeless. It's nothing like the diabolical nonsense that sinister communism sprouts about equality between rich and poor. The universe is fair. It makes me really wonder because the virus at the end of the day, if you've seen the news right now, um, really the only country that has a mass scale death and, and the, the fact that it is happening in China tells us something really important. And that is this virus is really targeting, uh, I would call it like a karma retribution against the way that they treated the pandemic in the early days, the fact that they, they continue to lie to the people. And I really want to ex expose this because I think it's my mission to talk about the issues. I mean, we can talk all day about the state of the politics in the United States, which I will, uh, but at the end of the day, the big threat around the world is the fact that the Chinese Communist Party wants to change the way we live and they want to take over and, and that's a danger. Now, this is all fun, so let's get to the actual hard part, which is how to figure out what the actual death toll of this entirety uh, really is, right? If you think about this, the, the purpose of figuring out what the numbers are is it's not about justifying how many people have died, because that's a sad thing, but it's about understanding that the CCP has taken a large death toll and reduced it down to you know, in this case, they say only 60,000 people died, which is very, very difficult for us to know what exactly is the, the number of deaths that they decided to not count uh, towards the virus. Okay, so in this mathematical calculation that I did, it, it's really simple, actually. I just took the 44 days, which started on December 8th to January, or to today, which is January 21st, uh, the 44 days, 
again, based on this estimate, I only use data from China, from the Chinese Communist Party official data set. So the, the actual amount, again, it's, it's going to be much higher, right? But just using their official number, 44 days as we speak. All right. From 2019 onward, it started to increase per year until now the number of crematoriums that they've been building uh, in China. So the nationwide first in 2019 was around 6,000 something. By the end of 2021, the number of incinerators nationwide reached 7,043. So between 2019 to 2022, uh, the number of incinerators which are used to burn the bodies increased to 7,000. And that's a really important number to remember. Okay, it shows us two things. The first is demand for cremation is rising rapidly in China and there is a, a large increase of the number of deaths somehow. The second thing is incinerators are at full capacity as we speak and they still cannot meet the demand before they keep expanding the number of incinerators and the number of funeral companies to do, the, uh, to do these things. So we see that in two years the numbers of funeral companies also doubled uh, to compared to what they were in 2019, which is pretty extraordinary, right? So funeral service is one that should kind of stay consistent in a country that has a normal year uh, of average death, which tend to be around similar numbers to previous years. And so for you to get an increased demand of funeral homes and crematoriums, something's different. Now, 7,000, right? That's an important figure. Basically what I did was I multiplied how many people could a single crematorium burn uh, the number of bodies in a day. Let's just make that about one per hour, right? One incinerator burning one body per hour. Now we know that in China, these crematoriums are working overtime, 24 hours a day. So let's say a day they burn 24 bodies, one per hour. Now we multiply that by the number of crematoriums, which right now we know, or sorry, incinerators, what right now we know it's about 7,043. We get a total number of 169,000. 169,032. So that's if you burn 24 bodies per day, 24 hours a day, uh, number of incinerators across the country. Okay, that gives ab us about 169,000 in a single day. Okay, that's how many bodies. In 44 days, in just the span of the period between December till now, we multiply that by the, uh, the, the number we just showed you, which is 169,000. So that would be about 7,437,000 deaths in those time period. Now, this is very conservative, right? Given the fact that we know there's more bodies being burned per day than just 24. And this is because it previously was revealed that in big cities like Beijing and Shanghai, because of the large demand for crematoriums, uh, the actual operating time for incinerators for each cremation was only about 40 minutes to even down to a uh, shorter, like half an hour. Which means that many families, and this is true, I've, I've been hearing this kind of stories, they have to break bones themselves because the body hasn't completely uh, broken down or burned into ashes yet, so that they actually, uh, because of the short amount of time for cremation, because they just have so many bodies, right? So this is not an actual situation on the ground, well, the calculation we just did. Because the wait time also, that's another factor. It's in some areas they've been increased to say 10 days, in other areas it's been like a month, and in some areas it's two to three days. So if we just average it out to like say five to seven days, which means that the 44 days that since the outbreak happened, we have to add on that additional five days, let's just say, to, to make up for the, uh, the wait time for you to burn a body. So let's say we add 45 days, or sorry, we add five days to the 44 days, which will give us 49 days. But let's just assume 50 days for easy calculation. So 169,000 times 50, that's about 8,450,000, right? Slightly a little bit more than 44 days. So 8,450,000, so 8, uh, this number, again, still not realistic because we just take the conservative estimate of the amount of time it takes to cremate a body, which uh, one per hour gives us 8.45 million. Now, this is, again, assuming that in China, every time you burn a body, it's just one body at a time. But that's not the case again. In China, there's, right now, as we speak, situations where there are double burning or triple burning. 
Sometimes they're even mixing multiple bodies because, again, this is just the sheer amount of death. So a tragic story. What happened was when they burned multiple bodies, they ended up dividing the ashes evenly between each urn. So it's, it's like their family members aren't even claiming the victim of the virus, their entirety of the ashes. Uh, they're getting divisions of multiple people. So some people didn't even want that anymore because it's just it, it's not how you treat a dead person, right? So let's assume if double, then that 8.45 million becomes 16.9 million. And then if you do it triple, so three bodies per burn, that's 25 million since December 8th. Now, 50 days from December 8th, if one body was burned, 8.45 million people died. If two, 16.9 million people died. And if three, 25.3 million people died. And that's not, again, the final figure. Why? Because we've only estimated the number of people cremated in China nationwide. Now, according to the CCP's own official figures for death, China's cremation ratio in 2021, not even considering this year yet, was only about 60% of the total death, meaning that roughly 6 out of 10 people were cremated, the other 4 out of 10 were buried. Right? So burial sites are also another one. But that's relatively simple to calculate because uh, there's no scheduling issues, there's no double or triple burials, so we can easily obtain the final national death toll uh, in these days. Let's just assume that 6 and 4 split for 2022 in these 50 days, right? What we would get is, if we take the math, 8.45 million, 60% of the death, meaning the other 40% would be about 5.63 million. Now, if we combine those two together, that's 14 million people dying from both cremation and burial. Or if you multiply that by two, if say you have the victims of, of double burning, then you get something much higher. And if you have victims of triple burning, again, you get something much higher. Now, if you times that by three years, right, the total amount of time for the COVID infection to hit China, we're getting close to 100 million people that way. Uh, so it's, it's honestly shocking to me because after I did the math for this, I realized that just based on these rough estimates, again, they're circumstantial evidence because we don't really have the real data. Only the CCP has the real data. We can conclude that the number of incinerators in China in 2022 is actually, in fact, uh, more significant in increases than 2021 and before because several big cities had to urgently add more crematoriums and cremation sites. And remember, you also had these mountains of just people burning like bodies on the ground, right? And then you also have the, uh, the actual burning time of the crematories being much less than an hour. Usually we're talking 40 minutes or less. That's, again, we didn't account for that here. Then you also have, according to multiple reliable sources, the outbreak actually beginning way before December 8th of last year, meaning that the 50 days that we used is actually dragged on much longer, which means this, with all of its systems combined, um, they've not been telling us at all exactly how many people have died from COVID. And this isn't a situation about whether or not the, uh, what's killing people in China is COVID or something else. But this is the fact about the entirety of the pandemics from the start in 2020 until now, there hasn't been any transparency with regards to how many people have died or how many people have even been infected. And even with all this, right, we still don't have a rough estimate as to how exactly is 400 million going to be explained with just the data available to us. But Master Li Hong just said that uh, 400 million people have died in China from the virus alone. And because precisely of the CCP lying, uh, that's a huge, huge, huge warning sign to us that, you know, at the end of the day, the virus is here to destroy the CCP. And I really believe it. Just look at the way their economy has been running. Uh, their Belt and Road Initiative, they're finally running out of money for it. All because the CCP tried to do something that's anti-human, right? They've been trying to develop, you know, uh, gain-of-function research in Wuhan laboratories, and they've been trying to do a lot of things to uh, try to undermine the free world and try to compete with the United States. But in the end, I think it's going to come back to bite them. I just really sincerely hope that the people watching us today and go read the article that I was talking about, which I'll link in the description again uh, before we conclude the video. But last point, um, my goal with calculating these isn't to prove that, oh, somehow there's enough to tally up to 400 million people dying, but it's to prove that the scale of which the actual number being reported 
versus what's actually happening in China, uh, they're two different things. And in fact, the distance between them are huge. Uh, and this is to say that we should never take the words of the Communist Party as it is, and we should actually always question. And with all of this being said, I think it's, it's a point for us to reach uh, here in this time um, to really consider why we are in this place and we have to do things, you know, to kind of work with the CCP uh, for people to get money, where in fact that they're, they've been actually lying. If they can kill millions of people with no remorse because of the virus, why would they want to be beneficial to working with people in the West, like in Wall Street or with the, with the US government? They wouldn't. Uh, I think that's the important part here, is understanding that nothing they do is really about benefits to us, it's always about their gain uh, at the expense of people. Anyways, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment. I'd love to discuss your thoughts on the calculation. Prove me wrong. And also make sure to like and subscribe to the channel on YouTube, but also on Ganjin World. Make sure to follow us. Uh, this is State of Politics. I'm David Zhang. We'll see you next time.